This talking head you see before you is none other than I, Artistic Director Timothy Beyer. Greetings and welcome to No Exit's first concert of our 12th season. It is so wonderful to see you all here tonight. Of course, I can't actually see any of you. You know, in so many ways, I feel like Miss Barbara from Romper Room. At the end of each episode, she would gaze into her magic mirror and call out, I see you, Robert, and you, Janice, and you, Susan, and Tommy. You know, as a child, I would always sit in front of the television set, anxiously awaiting for her to see me and call out my name. Alas, that day never came. I bet you all thought that because this was an online concert that you would be spared my usual rambling. No such luck. So, if you're seeing this now, then I can only assume that you have figured out how to view this concert. If, however, you want to see our concert program, we have created a program just like the ones we would hand out during our live concerts, only in a digital format. So if you want to see that and you don't know how, then you can visit our website, noexitnewmusic.com. Go to the upcoming events section, click on tonight's event, and there you will find a link that will allow you to download the concert program. I know that these have been strange and distressing times for all of us, and for many these last few months have also brought a great deal of financial hardship. The thing is, we still want your money. This is going to be a surprise for most of you, but avant-garde new music ensembles are not particularly well funded. And anything that you could give, and really I'm not trying to pressure anybody because I do know that these are hard times for so many people. Uh, but if you have the inclination to donate something, it would be greatly appreciated. The usual amount people give is around $10,000, but don't feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses. Um, and you can do so, wait for it, by going to noexitnewmusic.com, scrolling down to the bottom of the page, you'll see an awfully fancy button that says donate. And if you click on that, you can do your thing. Uh, we would be very grateful. You know, about two concert seasons ago, many of you may recall that we raised money for audio recording equipment and video recording equipment, and it is because of that that we are able to present the concert that we're going to this evening, and many concerts like it throughout this uh, season. So every little bit really does help, and thank you uh, for that. In regards to tonight's concert, I think, <laughs> you know, this wasn't exactly what we had planned, but I suppose all of us could say that about our life these last few months. Uh, things didn't quite turn out the way we planned. But sometimes uh, with these sort of sudden and unexpected change of circumstances, even if uh, it's brought on by, by not such a good thing, oftentimes opportunity is also created. And that is certainly the case tonight. We've been able to do something wonderful that I don't know if we would have done otherwise. You know, we're trying to follow good safety and health guidelines and so for the moment we're not playing as an ensemble so tonight's concert is going to be solo pieces with the exception of nick and kara who will be playing a cello and violin piece and each member is going to be broadcasting their part of the concert from a different location in most cases their homes um, and this is really fantastic you know it's an ensemble of some extraordinary uh, group players, but also extremely talented and extremely gifted soloists. So to have the opportunity to do this is uh, a wonderful thing, even if it's not what we had originally planned. Um, what's that expression? You, when life gives you lemons, you, you don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I think that says it all. I should also point out that Gunnar, our beloved clarinetist, will not be joining us tonight. He unfortunately had to have surgery on his hand. And Gunnar keeps telling me that you can't play clarinet with only one hand. I don't know if that's true or not. This is what he keeps saying. In any case, Gunnar, we miss you, and we all wish uh, for a very speedy recovery. And I have no doubt that Gunnar will be joining No Exit and performing with us again in the very near future. Lastly, and most importantly, 
I hope that all of you have been safe and healthy and have been doing well despite everything. I also hope that you've all still been able to find joy and happiness in life. And tonight's concert, in some small way, I, I hope that that adds to this, or adds to that, I should say. So please give a very warm welcome and a big hand, and we will know if you're not clapping. Please give a very big hand for no exit. <laughs>
Hello, I'm Sean Gabriel, and I'm happy to perform the Sonata for Solo Flute by German composer Harald Gensmer. I first encountered Gensmer's music when I was in high school studying flute with longtime Cleveland Orchestra member William Hebert. Mr. Hebert encouraged me to learn a set of etudes by Gensmer entitled Modern Studies, which sort of served as an introduction to contemporary music for me. And since then, I've learned and performed several pieces by Gensmer and his famous teacher, Paul Hindemith, whose music influenced many composers of the 20th century. I think I was in college when I found the solo sonata, uh, probably in the flute file at Educators Music Annex in Lakewood. And as much as I liked the piece immediately, it was intimidating. I really thought it was way over my head and knew that the rhythmic complexity and technical range of the work would require a lot of practice time to learn and perform. And so since we musicians have had a little more time on our hands in the past several months, I thought it would be a good time to revisit the work. So please enjoy the Sonata for Solo Flute by Harald Gensmer. Thank you. 
Hi. Nick and I will be playing De Toros by the Brazilian composer Hector Villalobos. This piece is uh, written in two short movements. The first movement is uh, it's, it's very interesting in the way that it's written. We're constantly battling sort of rhythmically. Um, the piece is written in a given time signature, but the rhythm that I'm playing does not fit in that time signature. And then Kara is always playing uh, cross rhythm against my rhythm. And so it, it's very dancey, but also, um, I don't know, it sort of feels like we're kind of fighting it out a little bit here and there. And the second movement um, is kind of a chorale uh, followed by a fugue. Um, and, you know, we're just kind of, it's very playful and sort of uh, a bouncy sort of movement. And then the end is sort of ethereal with lots of harmonics and interesting effects on the violin. We hope you enjoy this piece. Thank you. Thanks.
Hello, this is Adam Roberts, the composer of Bell Threads for Solo Viola. I'm speaking to you today from beautiful Franklin Park in Columbus, Ohio, and I wanted to share some information about Bell Threads from this location because I actually started writing it in the apartment building behind me just a little over 10 years ago. That apartment building is where my grandmother, Rosalind Freezer, lived for the last few years of her life, and I wrote it right around the time of her passing in 2009. The title Bell Threads signifies an image in my mind of a bell that had been struck in the recent past, and the resonance is lingering into the present moment. The violist then walks into this room, hearing this resonance, and starts picking out sinuous lines and delicate harmonics from that resonance, playing into and out of this imaginary resonance. Throughout the piece, the violist also ends up playing these prayerful longing lines that emerge from the lower part of the, of the instrument. Throughout the entire piece, the violist is muted, creating a dark, beautiful color. Bell Threads is both a dedication to my grandmother and to the instrument of the viola itself. I would like to thank Tim Beyer and No Exit New Music Ensemble for programming this piece in this time when we all yearn to make music together, and also to James Rhodes for learning the piece and dedicating himself to it.